You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Yes, sir. Kamel Bell. <laughs> special, yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> you don't consider yourself special? No, nah, no, nah, I'm happy to be here. No, nah, I just was, you know, just uh, watching Chris around and everything. You yeah, know? Chris Rock just left here. Now, Chris yeah. Chris used to executive produce your show. Yeah, Totally Biased. Yeah. Totally Biased. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That didn't work for some reason. Why no, it, it didn't was? work. I was not that good. Yeah, stop it. Yes, you were. No, no, I was brand new to TV. I was reading teleprompters. I hadn't done that before. I mean, mm-hmm. I, you know, I worked hard. Chris, I feel like I went to Chris Rock University for about two years, got an associate's degree in Chris Rock. But uh, after it was all said and done, I just couldn't, you know, it was five mm-hmm. It was five days a week, which was not, uh, was, I couldn't pull it off, man. You think Chris would stamp something that wasn't ready? No, I mean, I think we started out one day a week, and I think we were, I think one day a week we were good. But uh, then when they, they turned, they put us to FXX, which nobody had at that point. Mm-hmm. So Jesus I, Christ, that's like MTV2, FXX. Yeah, yeah no, at that, that point it was, it was like C-SPAN. FXX. Yeah. I know FX, there was a, there's a FXX? Yeah, now it's like it's a bigger channel, but back then, you know, my mom couldn't find it. She was like, yeah, oh, yeah, you, yeah. or you call the cable company, be like, it's $40 extra a month to get that. It's like Revolt, like, yeah. which we're on. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it was like people couldn't find it. You know, my, the audience who liked it couldn't find it. And uh, then, and then uh, you know, we were on five days a week and we got canceled. Yeah. Wow. You know, it's a story. <laughs> Frank's place. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good. What happened? Well, they moved around. He couldn't find it. But you you and Chris always had like a, y'all still got a special relationship kind of, right? No, Chris is like always clear. Like if I ever need anything, I can call him. I just try not to call him that often, you know, right. yeah. I, you know, but he's always clear. If I need anything, you know, I should reach out to him. I just feel like it's like having a icon in a glass case, you know what I mean? Because you're doing the, the, can we talk about that? Can we? Uh, this hasn't been announced yet. But, oh, but, never mind. Yeah. Damn, <laughs> I, mean, I brought I'm, it up in the last in, in the interview with Chris Rock, by the way. That's fine. Well, you know, he's not going to get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> he, he won't be fired. <laughs> He'll just find somebody to replace me. <laughs> well, let's talk United no, but, we're, but working on a project together. So, yeah. And I only reached out to him because I thought it was something he would like, not because I needed him for it. You, know? you thought oh, it would no, be beneficial I'm, for both of you. Yeah, yeah, I thought it would be. And it was kind of a me. It's like kind of a thank you to what he did for me. So mm-hmm. it's like, a, it's like you. you know, he's, a, he's an icon and a mentor and a friend. Friend, so he doesn't I, look at himself in that way, though. This is weird. I think that's what keeps him in that position. Yeah. You know how it is when people walk around thinking they're icons; it starts to fall <laughs> apart. <laughs> I am an icon. Not yeah, 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 yeah. Well, not, but but I, I don't know Jay Z, so I can't. Jay Z said he's that. a walking memorial. <laughs> <laughs> he said that himself, and he seems perfectly fine. All right, all right. Well, <laughs> well, some of us know that if we get caught up like that, it's not going to look good. That's why I know when you say special, I'm like, oh, I hope so. You know, gotcha. if I walk around saying, "Yes, I'm," a, you know, I'm special. It's not going to work out well for me. Got gotcha. you. Now, United Shades of America. Yes, sir. Must see TV in my house. I watched it Sunday. All right. Thank you, brother. Uh, the, Appreciate the it. episode with Richard Spencer. Yes, sir. And when you, I was like, why? and I thought the one with the KKK was, uh, it was hilarious, but I didn't know if it was real or not. <laughs> oh, it was real. Okay. Yeah, no, it was real. Uh, yeah, I was, uh, I was frightened. People said, were you scared? I was like, yeah, I was scared. Yeah. I'll explain United Shades of America. Basically, well, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> no, I kind of want to hear what you have to tell you. I mean, to it. me, it's just like you're like how they say you should go across the aisle. Yeah. It's yeah. like you're going across the aisle, but you're going across the aisle with like extreme members of society: Ku yeah. Klux Klan, yeah. alt right guys like Richard Black Spencer. Black man with an afro went to KKK. Yeah, yeah. I went to a I went to a cross burning. How did that work out? Uh, I'm here, right? <laughs> but you know, you, I'm you smiling, are, yeah, yeah. You also have the one on Chicago Gangs, and I had a chance to watch that one. Oh, cool. Thank they, you. They sent us a screener. Okay, yeah, so I right. had a chance to see that in advance, which I was always very interested in, because you're right, there are certain cities that people say you can't go there because right. it's too dangerous, yeah. there's too many gangs, yeah. you know, and Chicago is definitely one of those places Absolutely. right now. Yeah. And people don't discuss the history of why is it the way that it is. Yeah. So crazy, though, because I saw the special with the KKK, saw Richard Spencer, but when I saw the trailer on Sunday for Chicago, I was like, come on, you're going too now you're going too far. You're going, <laughs> you're going to Chicago. Too far. Like, <laughs> going to the south side <laughs> Chicago. Yeah, 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 yeah. None, of that, none of that was scary to me. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Chicago? Well, that's what's funny. People are like, what's the next controversial episode? Everything is controversial to different people. So yeah, right. the next episode after with the Klan, we went to San Quentin. A lot of people were way more angry about me talking to inmates in San Quentin than they were about me talking to the Klan. Really? Yeah, because they're like, well, these guys are in jail. They did t- horrible things. They shouldn't get any screen time. And, you know, and meanwhile, and also because we told their stories and let them tell their stories. I didn't judge them. So. Have you ever felt in danger on any uh, any of the episodes? I mean, I mean, when the Klan one was, because the the thing about the the cross burning is th- that sort of makes it crazy. Not only was it a cross burning, it was also my very first day at work. So not only are you like trying to meet people and hey, what's your name? Also, we're, later we're all can go to a cross burning. So exp- explain that. Explain you meeting the the members of the KKK. Yeah. How did that happen? What was that conversation like? And you and why? Uh, <laughs> one uh, needed a job. Okay. Uh, totally buys have been canceled. Two kids won't feed themselves. 
And I knew that uh, if I was going to do this show, CNN already has Bourdain and Lisa Ling. I had that was the pilot, and I knew I had to do something that separated me from Bourdain and Lisa Ling. Like mm-hmm. Bourdain's not going to the clan; he's not trying the food. So I was like, I got to do something that is like that really makes sure that if they buy this show, they're getting something different than what they already have. How difficult is it to set up meetings with the Ku Klux Klan? Yeah, who did you call? Hey, Luckily, I didn't call anybody. I, I, I farmed that out to the white people on staff. I let oh, them. Sure. I let white people you. keep the KKK on <laughs> yeah. Call the Grand Wizard. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the producers had to call and like talk to them on the phone for hours. And the funny thing about the Klan, they think if they're talking to any white person, that that white person is sympathetic to the Klan. And so they're like, well, you know how these black people are. So the producers were like, oh yeah, yeah, right. Can we meet on Friday at four? You know, like they had to sort of like, Say anything to get, the, to get it done. Yeah, to get the deal yeah. done. So then I showed up. I said. hadn't met them. You know, I showed up that day and, you know, and met them. You know, but it was, the scary thing was, especially the cross burning, we were there for hours. So we got there like 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 four in the afternoon. It was bright sunlight. And they don't like the cross until it's pitch black. So we're there like three hours waiting for, and we're not filming the whole time. So sometimes you're just waiting for it to get dark. And while three or four of them would talk to me, there was a whole like about 10 or 15 other ones who looked like they wanted to kill me. And I was like, you know, if this gets dark, how does this go down? Where did you pee? I thought about that. Because <laughs> now that you say that, I'm like, yeah. I would have held my pee because I was no way I'm going to go wander off to the woods. No, no, I didn't <laughs> ask for, where's the bathroom? Yeah, I didn't, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. I, no, I held my pee. I didn't even think about that till now. There was no, I think I think I probably soaked up my pee. I think yeah. I was probably, so what, yeah. what conversation did you have with him you know, during that three hour time? For me, the idea behind the show is that, is that I was, as a black man, of course I'm curious about the Klan. Of right. course I want to know what's going on. And, I'd always been curious to like, what would that be like if you talk to them and hear them and actually let them lay out all their points and what they think and how they think this is going to work out. So for me, it was like everything from like, explain to me why you don't like black people. And they always go back to the Bible because the Bible says the race shouldn't mix uh, all the way through. What scripture is that? I can't remember. Exactly. When you said that, I was like, what scripture is that? What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, something about, it's something about animals mixing that they apply to like people mixing. You they know, make and, it work. Yeah, they make it work, you know. But at the same tone, he's like he eats lobster and lobster. They don't, you know, lobster. The Bible says don't eat lobster. It too. does. Uh, so right, and pork. Yeah. So and yet here we are. Uh, so the other thing was is like I also want to know like t- tell me about how you like the cross. I just wanted to like know all the things. I'm a curious person, and so mm-hmm. the guy got excited. He nobody ever asked him these questions before. So you get to sort of see them. I'm not trying to humanize them, but I am trying to say that like I'm trying to demystify them. Is the thing I, right. is what I was trying. You're the do. only black person there. Oh yeah, yeah. We had a, the security guy was Mexican, but he told him he was white because they said there could be no other people of color around. So he said he, even though he's clearly Mexican. Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. It's interesting though. I wonder, uh, like people usually give people flack. They're like, oh, you sh- you shouldn't give these guys a platform. Yeah. You shouldn't give Richard Spencer the platform. You shouldn't yeah. give KKK a platform. Like, yeah. Do you no, need I, that flack? I, no, I've heard that, especially with Richard Spencer. The Klan too, especially with Richard Spencer. I, I think to me that's 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 cowardice. I feel like because giving Richard Spencer or the Klan a platform is if I said this week on the show. I'm turning it over to the Klan and letting them do what they want to do. You're this, challenging them. Yeah, I'm yeah. actually there. And also, especially with the Richard Spencer episode, are surrounded by him talking about what he believes is stories of immigrants and refugees painting a picture of America that we would all support. And so for me, it's like the dichotomy. Like on one hand, you have what he says. On the other hand, you have these people who are the America I want. And the reason why Spencer has impo- importance right now is because his ideas are in the White House. His ideas are two yeah. offices down from Donald Trump, Steve Bannon, Stephen Miller. So it's like, it's not just some random guy we found. When we interviewed him, when we first booked that interview, he wasn't nationally known. By the time we got to the interview, he was he's become more known. And then after that, he he's now become a national figure. So I feel like mm-hmm. it's important. And, I, and I'm not sitting there, you know, I'm pushing back on him. I'm also, it's clear what side I'm on. I don't end the show going, Richard Spencer believes this. Immigrants and refugees believe this. I don't know who to believe. It's not, I'm not being a journalist. I'm being a comedian with an opinion. Okay. And yeah. I live in Berkeley, so I'll fight you. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's funny with Richard Spencer because I'm sitting there watching him and I'm watching him talk to you, and I'm like, I feel the same way about my blackness that Richard Spencer feels about his whiteness. I just yeah. don't want to oppress anybody. Yeah. Well, I think white pe- he was he, the thing he said is white people need to talk about their whiteness more. I believe that 100. percent The problem is it's only white people like him who want to talk about their whiteness. I think every white person needs to talk about their. If you're proud to be white, be proud to be white. Yeah. I'm proud to be black. Proud to be Mexican. Do it. There's, gay. Whatever. Yeah. Press, there's there's got to be. That's what I said. There's got to be good things about being white that aren't just su- white supremacy and <laughs> slavery. There's got to be you know Taylor Swift. I don't know, but you yeah. know there's got to be things that you can be proud of about being white. But white people identify whiteness as American. Mm-hmm. Or yeah, person, yeah, 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 I, yeah. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a, um, you know, I'm a proud American. I'm a proud per- human being. As a human being, I feel you hear white people say like that all the time. Right. But and then and they don't say as a white person, I feel this way, and I, I feel like white people need to claim that. I loved when you broke down uh, immigration. 
oh, and yeah. how so much of what we love right now is is, is fueled by immigrants. Yeah, like Google yeah. and what else was it? Uh, it's Google. It's it's Instagram. It's yeah. uh, I mean, Facebook was co-founded by uh, an, an, by an immigrant. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, the list goes on and on. I can't, I was watching it like, what, what have white people done lately? <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. That's, like, that's why they were determined to take the White House back. They're yeah. like, we got, we got to keep something in our corner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, the immigrants fuel innovation in this country because they come here hungry and thirsty and actually trying to build the American dream that a lot of us have sort of given up on or realize we don't have access to. They don't show up thinking they don't have access to it. So then they create three million jobs. I mean, it's, it's all the numbers are clearly in favor of immigration and, and, people from other countries coming here. Don't you feel like that's when you lose, though, when you tell yourself that you don't have access to it? Like, when you tell yourself it can't, oh. it's, it's, it's not possible, as soon as you say that, yeah. it's like you're done. Yeah. Well, I think it's not that we don't have access to it, but we've been convinced that over time. I mean, that's why the next episode is about Chicago. Mm-hmm. The, if you go to the south side and west side of Chicago, there's acres and acres of undeveloped land. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, there's just all this, uh, there's the, all this potential that if the city said, we need to create tech investment, we need to give tax breaks to people to move into these places, right. forget you can't get a job, you can't go to a grocery store, you mm-hmm. know, so... There's all this acres and acres of undeveloped land in one of the greatest cities in the country. It's not a bad town. Chicago's one of America's best it's cities. It's only we certain about. neighborhoods, yeah. certain areas. Yeah. And if you go to the north side, you can see that it's it's wall-to-wall buildings and jobs and people, but the south side could look the same way. So, and it's interesting you talk about how they cut ed- cut money on education. Yeah. In those in those same neighborhoods where yeah. they're saying that there's problems. Now, when you left there, did you feel like, man, what can we do? Because that's one thing that people always talk about. What can we do to make uh, those neighborhoods in Chicago better? Obviously, Chance yeah. the Rapper has been doing yeah. what he has to do, donating money to education. But it was interesting to see you go there. And you said they you felt like they didn't know who you were. No, they didn't. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you, yeah. you had actually sat down with Lil Durk. Yep. And with Vic Mensa, yeah. a do or die. Yep. <laughs> Looking like I felt like the substitute principal, you mm-hmm. know, yeah, yeah. Feeling like they were like they didn't care. By the time they started talking, I could have shut up. I just sort of, I, well, I did shut up for a lot of it and just let them handle it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they hadn't been, those guys hadn't sat down in that way to talk about directly about the problems. So, right. Yeah. And, and, and I got to, uh, yeah, Malik Youssef, I don't know if you know him. Mm-hmm. He yep. really, he organized the whole thing. I got to give him a shout out. Oh, he's he was, the one that organized all the interviews. And he organized all the interviews with the, with the yeah, with the gang members. He was right there. A lot of times he was right there on scene, like poking at him, get him to talk. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah I, mean, I was wondering how you got them to talk because even when you came in, they don't have a trust for the no. cameras coming. I mean, in. CNN does not get you credit in most communities, but especially not the black community. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's not, so I had to, we had to, we started, I mean, we, that conversation was supposed to be a half hour and ended up being two hours long. If you'd have walked in with First 48 on your camera, they'd all be talking. <laughs> yeah. I, I liked having a conversation with Little Dirk about Chicago because he opened up my eyes. He was like, even if you want to do good in Chicago, yeah. you still got to carry a gun because you got to protect yourself. That yeah. wasn't Dirk. That was um, Herb. 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 G. Herbo. G. Herbo. Herbo. Yeah, my bad. Not Dirk. Herbo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you're right. No, and I think that's the the thing. The, the episode ends, and I was really happy. I mean, I'm really happy about the fact that we got the word reparation in a show on CNN. Yeah. Because I feel like that's going to be the first time many people hear it. And I know some people are going to be pissed off by hearing it. But for me, like, that's the whole point is, like, trying to use this huge platform of CNN to push conversations forward. Mm-hmm. So I was really – and we end the episode with people – with. All the all the people, the so-called gang members, all the so-called poor people, all the black people have the answers. The commu- there needs to be reinvestment in the community, and so we very, I think, skillfully connect gang violence to reinvestment in the community and better schools. Like right. if the, communities that have good schools and and job opportunities don't have the same high crime rates. So I mean, for me, it's like I was really happy about that. People are going to tune into the episode thing. We're going to talk about the, f- the exciting gang violence. But it was it, interesting it was, to me when I saw one guy. You when you pulled up to the neighborhood and the police were there and they were arresting somebody, yeah. and the guy was like, "No, I want the cops to do their job. Yeah. I just wanted them to do their job when they're supposed to." Yeah, no, I was super happy about that because nobody expected that guy mm-hmm. to be in favor of the cops because he's a very he didn't seem like a guy who he seemed like he might be afraid of the cops, but he actually didn't trust the Black Lives Matter guy. And for me, that was like I was like nobody just has ever nobody expects to see this on TV mm-hmm. that the that the dude from the hood is more worried about Black Lives Matter than he is about the cops. But that's the truth. We do want to have cops, but we want our cops to do their jobs responsibly. It was yeah. right. Yeah. Why yeah. the hell was he scared of the Black Lives Matter guy? Not scared of him, but he didn't. The Black Trust. Lives Matter guy was it was like cop watching. He was recording the cops mm-hmm. uh, doing who were arresting a couple people, gotcha. and he wasn't scared of him. But he was just like. He's like the Black Lives Matter. He's like he has nothing to do with this. He doesn't need to. Be, he doesn't even do, need to be here. Those cops are doing their jobs, and it's a dude who, that your average white person watching is gonna be shocked at that guy. They're gonna, you know how people. It's gonna be a hood part. dude. Yeah, it's a yeah. hood dude. Yeah, yeah. So when you talk about reparations, what exactly do you mean? 
I mean, reparations is the buzzword. It's also the scary word. But you're really just talking about reinvestment in the community. Like gotcha. that, cities all the time do this thing where they look at neighborhoods and they go, "We're going to give tax breaks to the businesses that move here so that we can get things started. Right. We're going to we're going to put money in the schools here to sort of like you know, there's the, as we know, nice suburbs have great public schools. Right. And, you know, so we know that there's it, – it's not that money can solve the problem, but money can certainly begin to solve the problem, can grease the skids to the problem being solved. You want HUD to do their job, basically. Yeah, where's Ben Carson been? Yes, cut the goddamn <laughs> like, check. Yeah, like, Stuck in an elevator. Yeah, you, you, yeah. Still yeah. Still <laughs> he, he knows, yeah, but you would think Ben Carson would be on a tour of all the cities yeah. talking to people because we know he doesn't know what the hell he's doing in that job. We know he doesn't know anything about it. So you would think he would be on some tour right now talking to activists, leaders, politicians in the major cities to figure out what we can do. But That's why I wasn't upset when Steve Harvey went to go meet with Trump and Trump was like, we're going to connect him with Ben Carson. Steve was like, we're going to connect with Ben Carson and figure this thing out. But is that a good look? Yes, because Steve is already... <laughs> I mean, I'm not anti... Steve I'm just, already yeah. invest his money into the hood yeah, yeah, and into yeah. the community. But, so, you understand, yes. but you understand why people would feel like that wasn't a good I look. I think it would be bad when he said he's a good guy or something like and that. And also that it was like a photo op for it was Donald fu- Trump. It's the, fu- it's it's a the photo like, op of a, you could do that behind the scenes and me. But, what if but fo- when it's Donald Trump, like me and my good buddy yeah. Steve Harvey, what if that photo op, What if that photo op leads to millions being invested in the hood, though? No, I hope from it does, but we just don't... We Why not? Donald when Trump that happened a, from a conversation more than just a picture but who cares if you want to have a convo and you get the picture who cares as long as the end result is you get some betterment for the hood who but cares? let's see yeah let's see. <laughs> I'll step back while you guys yeah. handle this no you can tell this is a continuing conversation this is a, yeah. I feel like Van Jones uh, took your idea man my dad texted me. He's like, Van Jones, watch out for Van Jones. Yeah, man. I feel like, <laughs> I feel like Van Jones took your idea, man. You know, I, 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 feel, like if, I feel like Van Jones, I, I, you do your thing just as long as they do keep renewing thing. my show. I was number one in the demo on Sunday, so yeah. okay. I'm doing all right. Yeah. There you go. Because yeah, he's doing yeah. the same exact thing. He, I mean, he, but he's doing it a different way. He's not a comedian. So there's a, I mean, I, we're both sincere, but I think certainly the way I talk to people, we're, you know, I, I'm never going to hate another black man being successful. So, you know, I'm not going to, you know, certainly my dad. I would my dad, steal my idea. My dad's worried. About it, my dad's got my back, so he'll keep it. Your dad say he was like, "Van stealing your idea." He did. He sent me a text message. Van Jones is stealing your idea. He's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> so what's, what's I got love for Van. I'm what's not trying to. Yeah. Van, that's, that's like yeah. This, what did he do to you? The third time you, you went at Van this week. No, it's not. I have a Angela with Rye. I actually like Van a lot. I just feel like number one, Van did steal his idea, okay. <laughs> and number two, Van goes in and out of the sunken place sometimes. Like sometimes you, Van did the same thing. Van saw the speech with Trump, and he was like. For the first time, he looks presidential. Van's that was a, great. Van right. is definitely a, a uniter. He's trying to do. He walks a very fine line as a dude who's been in the White House. Yeah. As a dude who can go. I just did an event with Van in Chicago at, at the Boys and Girls Club uh, on the West Side, and Van was like at the the MLK Junior Club, and Van was like it was like a preacher. He's like a different dude. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. he was getting the young people to like speak up, and he helped this one young woman, one young woman who said she wants to do animation. He's like, I'm gonna hook you up with Pixar, and it's and he knows that he in these different places, he's a different Van. So you know, he's a. Uh, He's walking a fine line. Yeah. Yeah. Where are some other places you'll be visiting? Or people? Uh, we're gonna North do- Korea. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> season three. That'd yeah, season cool. three. That would be a good one if they, if they increase our budgets. Uh, uh, I'm lucky we got to Puerto Rico this season. We actually do go to Puerto Rico as the season finale to f- figure out what's going for. Because I'd never been there before and didn't really think about it. Uh, mm-hmm. We also go to Dearborn and Hamtramck, Michigan to talk to Muslims and Arabs about and It was the right after the election, so right after Trump had won, so a lot of people were worried about it. Uh, we also, there's an episode that it's about, should I buy a gun? So it's about gun safety, and in the episode, I buy a gun. It's so interesting that you say that, because every time I go to Detroit, it's always weird to me, because in New York, you can't have a gun. Yeah. But in Detroit, everybody. Michigan, everybody got a gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Has a gun, and it always, I, when I go places where people can just have guns, just because I grew up not having guns and not being able to, it always is such a weird feeling to me. Well, I know it's very normal, and they feel weird when they come here. And yeah, they can't and carry. yeah, and there's a town in uh, Kennesaw, Georgia, where every head of household has to have a gun. There's a law in the books that says mm-hmm. you have to you have to own a gun. Do you have a gun? I do now. I'm not carrying. It's mm-hmm. cool. Okay. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I, but I mean, for the purpose of the episode, I had to buy a gun. So and uh, yeah. So but people it's not, keep what, telling me state? I should have a gun in my house. What state do you live in? Uh, California. Mm-hmm. Oh, you can have a, you can have a gun in California. You can have a gun. You, you can't open carry though. Okay. Can you have a you can have I mean, a gun you, in New York? You can get a, you can house, get a yeah. permit for mm-hmm. it. You can get a permit in county from county to county if you can carry a gun, but you can't just do it like in Georgia. You can just openly carry. Oh, okay, yeah, Virginia's yeah. the same way. Yeah. You're from Oakland, right? Uh, I mean, I've been out there. I moved out there in '97 from Chicago. So that's why I did the oh, Chicago. You're born in Chicago. Okay, okay. I, knew, I, right, gotcha. well, I was in born in Chicago. Went to high school in Chicago. I moved around a lot, so mm-hmm. that explains why I keep moving. Military guy? No, black mom with opinions. 
<laughs> she just had to, sometimes you had to move sometimes you had to move <laughs> she just she just had she had a lot of opinions it was the 80s yeah we lived in boston for one point she got tired of the racism chicago just elected harold Mar- harold washington mayor and she wanted to move someplace where a black person was in charge got you. So, do yeah. you ever keep in touch with the people that you've had on on the show uh yeah i mean not like directly but like when i went back to portland i did a stand-up show there and like people from the portland episode showed up and a lot of it's online yeah mm-hmm. yeah do you have a text with richard spencer it's like hey good morning <laughs> 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 he, he tweeted you at me he, 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 he tweeted at me with, before the show aired and i took about eight hours so i was like let me just i sort of had to figure out how am i gonna get back to this you dude. follow him what do you say no, to you? no. <laughs> uh he, he's made a joke he said did you cut out the part of the episode where i talk about eating babies or something he was trying to be funny and i was just like i don't know if i want to be funny with you on Twitter, yeah man. i don't know if i can joke yeah especially the episode had <laughs> Why don't you watch the episode first? Yeah, you don't want Black Twitter to kill you. No, no, no. Plus, people were accusing me of normalizing him, and last thing I wanted to be like, ha, man, you know me, you know. So I didn't. So I just sort of let it. Yeah, we left it in. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he was, you know. So and then I just said, hey, man, you know what I said was, I see what you're asking. I think we did not take you out of context. Everything you said is what you said. And of course, I editorialized and made jokes. I called you a snowflake, you know, so just to let him know that what was up. But you did, play, you you did play the video of him getting punched in the face a I, few times. Well, you know, that's just like you know, that's like, that's the thing people know him for. People who don't know him for anything know him for that. We didn't play it nine times. And made sure to point out it was a white hand. And made sure to point out it was a white yes. hand. Yeah, I did. Yes. I do my due diligence. Absolutely. I'm trying to, you know, I don't want people to think I'm just out here. People have this idea that I'm that some people think I'm just out here for attention, and I'm not out here for attention. Like the thing going on in Berkeley now. I live in Berkeley, so every week the alt right shows up to kick people's asses in Berkeley, and so. So that's like right near where I live, and there's helicopters over my house. So this is I'm in the middle of this. I'm not doing this for attention. I think it's very informative simply because I feel like it is a lot of young people who want to be conservative, but this isn't like real no. conservative views. And he this even is, says that. Yeah, he even says that. This yeah. is like, uh, 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 that alt-right is not what conservatives are about. No, no. But they're is, getting yeah. that, and it's kind of like ruining a generation. Yeah, and the thing that Richard Spencer's doing is he's making it sort of cool and millennial and young, so people yeah. are like attracted to it. Because as he said, he's wearing, I mean, he looks, He the reason why he's the leader of the movement is because he looks better than the rest of them. You know, yeah. I was there at that conference. You wouldn't want most of those people on camera. Yeah. But he actually, and but it's mostly young dudes. It's mostly young, excited dudes who were promised the world, and now they're at their, they're all like 25, and the world's not being delivered to them, and they think it must be everybody's fault but themselves. They're waiting for their white privilege to kick they, in. They're waiting when? for their white privilege. Yeah. When they realize it's already kicked in. You yeah. know, your, your life is better, and you don't even realize it. Gotcha. It's like, you know, it's like, yeah, it's like being six foot four like I am. It's just, it's just better. I, hey, man, I love it, man. Let's keep them in an influx, man, and take advantage of them being confused right now. I'm <laughs> yeah. serious. Yeah, and start, the, and start the conversation. I think a lot of people, a lot of people are like, well, you give him a platform. I know from the Klan episode, we are not. We have the tendency to think we're all equally woke, that if we know the information, then everybody knows the information. That's a fact. And I know for sure, when the Klan episode, a lot of black people were like, why are you putting them on TV? I already knew the Klan. We already know the Klan, blah, blah, blah. And at the same time, I'm getting 10 times more tweets from white people going, oh, my God, I had no idea that right. they were still. And so, for me, that's what the show is about. There's going to be a lot of people watch the Chicago episode who go, I already knew this stuff. But for most of the country, they don't know this stuff, or they think they know this stuff. That's why you have to be patient and matters where others are involved, because there was a time that you who know knew not. Yeah. And I look at that from the flip side, too, because like when you hear people say things like, like when Tommy Lauren will say things like, the Black Panthers is like the KKK. No, they're not. <laughs> but you don't know because you're 24 years old. But will she sit down and listen to that, though, is the question. She is has. She, okay, yeah. all right. I mean, that's the thing. Would it like, change her views? I don't know. But, yeah, but I think the idea is that even even if you have a conversation with Tommy Lauren, especially like that's aired, other people are hearing the conversation. That's why I get with the Spencer thing. He's not going to change his views, but other people who are watching yes. are changing Might be their a little Absolutely. disgusted. Yeah. Well, yeah. the Chicago one is going to be really great to watch because I really appreciate how, and I always say this, a lot of it people will say, oh, Chicago's terrible, they have gangs, the kids are bad, but you have to see why mm-hmm. is it like that there? Why are people in gangs in Chicago? Mm-hmm. What's going on? And it, it's not just because people just grew up and said, hey, this is what I want to do. I want to be in a gang. Yeah. It's yeah. the circumstances that you're in, and it's also... Education plays yeah. a, a huge part in opportunity. And as Malik Youssef says in the thing, he was looking for love on some mm-hmm. level that there was not. He did not have a lot of love in his household. He said, and he was looking for love. And the and the and that's one thing is that we talk about too is that the, the gang life gave him a sense of belonging. And, right. you know, but the, but every to a person, there was not one gang member we talked to. And I even call them gang members who was like, this is the life I want, this is the life I love, and I'm happy to be here. And I think that's what's going to be surprising to people. Well, you got to be careful, too. May 7th at 10 p.m. on CNN. Yeah, and you got to be careful. You can't be a grown man saying you're looking for love. <laughs> you he was saying, no, no, no. Game. He was talking about when he was younger, like being in a fraternity yeah, 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 having your yeah, brothers yeah, that yeah. love you and look, look out for, for you. Love. It's like family. The love you need. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having Bell, me. Bell, Bell. It's the breakfast. Uh, come on, come out, come out, come out. It's the breakfast. Right. Good morning.
The Breakfast Club, every weekday morning. Tune in.